and we thank God this morning for being back in what we have deemed his house um, for the time that we have been here. God has been faithful to us and we're thankful. Thankful this morning that each of you are here um, and we want to take the time to welcome you, you back to Open Word Ministries. God has been faithful to us. And we appreciate him for that. Our scripture this morning is going to come from Psalm 118, verses 14 through 17. Psalm 118, verses 14 through 17, out of, I'm reading the Amplified Classic Version. It says, The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents and private dwellings of the uncompromisingly righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiant, valiantly and achieves strength. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly and achieves strength. Yes. I shall not die but live mm. and shall declare the works and recount the illustrious acts of the Lord. Now, David was going through some stuff during this time. And above and beneath though that, that passage that we just read, it talks about some of the things he was experiencing. But he wanted to make sure that he inserted in here. Should we ever be in a place where we're feeling like it's so much coming, it's so much going on, there's so much that we're struggling with, that the Lord is his strength and song mm -hmm. and salvation. Listen, everything that we need God to be, he is. He'll give us the strength to carry on. He'll give us a song to keep in our spirit, to help lift us up. And then he will save us. And not just save us in the sense of, yes, we thank him for being our redeemer, but he will save us from some trouble. Mm -hmm. He will save us from some consequences. He will save us from things going worse than we ever thought they could be. So we're thankful this morning that the right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of God does valiantly and achieves strength. David said that twice, right behind each other, so that he could sing this song and that we could remember ourselves all these years later that God's right hand is exalted. And we know there's power in this right hand. This right hand is the one that is used to lay on a hand to proclaim the blessing. So his hand is exalted. Y'all, he wants to reach out and do it for us. So whatever is going on in your life, whatever you're sacrificing, whatever is being challenged right now, remember this, that God's right hand is exalted and is extended towards you. And he's going to do just what you need him to do. Mm -hmm. He's going to work it out and it's going to be no question, no doubt that it was God who did it for you. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning, God, for your hand that is outstretched towards your people. God, we thank you that there is nothing that is coming up against us, nothing that the enemy can plan, nothing that we can even mess up ourselves that can stop you from being exalted. God, that your hand is ready to reach out and save, that is ready to do mighty things. God, we thank you for that word this morning, the reminder God, as we begin to face this coming week, whatever challenge, God, that we will face, help us to remember that your right hand, God, is extended towards us, is exalted, and is ready to do mighty things for our behalf, God, not just because we're your children, God, but because of your name, God, for your word's sake, God, for your name's sake, for what you have already spoken, God, it shall come to pass, and we thank you for that this morning, we thank you, God, for sending your son, Jesus, to die for our sins. God, we thank you for that this morning. We pray and ask, God, that you would apply that blood to our lives today. God, in any way that we may have wronged or sinned against you, we ask that you would apply that blood. God, that's still working, that's still doing what needs to be done, that's still saving, that's still cover, recovering the loss. God, that you would apply it to us this morning. God, so that as the Holy Spirit speaks in here through our pastor, that you would move like you've never moved before. God, that you would do in us something that cannot be undone. God, not by us or the enemy or anyone else. God, do in us today what needs to be done. Speak to us, God, what we need to hear from you today. And we thank you, God, because we know you didn't we didn't come here, God, with expectation for you to disappoint. You don't know how to do that. God, you come to move and you come to speak and you come to do what only you can do. So, God, we say today, have your way, move and do what needs to be done on the inside, God, a lasting work. And, God, we won't wait until we see it, but, God, we'll begin to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor now because we we know that this is your will for our lives, for us to be changed and to be that much more closer to you. 
So we ask all of these things, God, that you would bless our pastor to speak under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. God, that you would use him how you want to. God, that you would help him to recall everything that you have spoken to him concerning this message. We thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives. We submit these prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 24 through 28, rolling right into chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Uh, from the New Living Translation. When the child was weaned, Hannah took him to the tabernacle in Shiloh. They brought along a three-year-old bull for the sacrifice and a basket of flour and some wine. After sacrificing the bull, they brought the boy to Eli. Sir, do you remember me? Hannah asked. My God. Do you remember me? Hannah asked. I am the very woman who took, who stood here several years ago. <laughs> several years ago, praying to the Lord. I asked the Lord to give me this boy, and he has granted my request. Now I am giving him to the Lord, and he will belong to the Lord his whole life. And they worship the Lord there. Chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Then Hannah prayed, my heart rejoices in the Lord. The Lord has made me strong. Now I have an answer for my enemy. I rejoice because you rescued me. No one is holy like you, like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. I want to share with you today, keep your word and don't regret it. Keep your word. And don't regret it. Uh, I don't believe it's scripture. But there is a saying that says. A man's word. Mm -hmm. Is his bond. In other words. There, there was times that. Uh, you know. Me and Dabney every now and then. Dabney have put me through the pinky drill. And say pinky promise daddy. And, 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 and all of this. But it used to be where that. We didn't have to have pinky promises. We didn't even have to say, I promise. Mm -hmm. All we simply had to say was, I do this mm -hmm. or I'll do that. And, and people could count on us to keep our word. Mm -hmm. so, so that's where that whole saying about a man's word is his bond because people could trust people um, to do what they say they was going mm -hmm. to do. But, but uh, I, I must warn us because Jesus talked against yes. or talked about mm -hmm. making vows. Yes. Uh -huh. Jesus talked about it over in, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 33 through 37. This is what Jesus said. I'm still reading from the New Living about teachings about vows. He said, you have also heard that our ancestors was told, you must not break your vows. Mm -hmm. You must carry out the vows you make to the Lord. This is Jesus talking. But I say, do not make any vows. Mm -hmm. Do not say by heaven, because heaven is God's throne. Yeah. And do not say by the earth, mm -hmm. because the earth is his footstool. And do not say by Jerusalem, for Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Do not even say by my head, for you can't turn one hair white or black. This is what Jesus is saying. Verse 37 says, Jesus said this, just say a simple yes, yes I will or no I won't. Anything beyond this is a form is from the evil one. Why, why would Jesus say that? Because Jesus knows what lies ahead. I 
think I'm going to finish this message. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see the Lion King after this to celebrate our, our anniversary. I just let go the secret to Daphne because um, she didn't know that we was going to see the Lion King live. So I didn't release it. Now she's excited. But, but, but I, we have plans. Yes. But Jesus know if we're going to make it downtown Austin. Yes, he does. He know. Uh, so this is why he say, just simply say, yes, you will, or no, you won't. And then over in another passage, he said, make sure you say, if it's the Lord's will, you will do this or you will do that. Because none of us know what tomorrow holds unless he makes us a promise. Oh, God. Over in Ecclesiastes, it's in 5, verse 4 through 6, it says, when you make a promise, to God, don't delay in following through. For God takes no pleasure in fools. Oh, God. Keep all the promises you make to him. It is better to say nothing than to make a promise and not keep it. Don't let your mouth make you sin. Uh -huh. And don't defend yourself by telling the temple messenger that that the promise you made mm. is a mistake, was a mistake. <laughs> My God. That would make God angry and he might wipe out everything you have achieved. Mm. Oh, God. In other words, don't get emotionally distraught mm -hmm. and start making promises. Making vows and telling God, God, if you do this, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. So often we find ourselves in a jam and we do and say drastic things mm -hmm. to get out. We should never make emotional decisions that could lead to a permanent decision in a temporary situation. Mm -hmm. Oh God, just because uh, um, um, a, a good example, oh God, is it, Jacob and Esau. Mm -hmm. uh, Esau made a lifelong decision just because he was hungry. Uh, God. All he had to do was ask his mama to cook him something to eat or, 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 or just take that big brother around and be like, Jacob, I'm eating some of this and, and we just gonna scrap. Uh, 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 they could have went through that. But he made a lifelong permanent decision in a temporary situation. Oh God. He, I'm, I'm sure he had been hungry before. Mm -hmm. And at some point he ate. Mm -hmm. But this time he came and he made this emotional decision that if you just give me something to eat, I give you the birthright. Oh God. And after he gets something to eat, now he has the nerve to get mad that Jacob don't give it back to him. Lord, help me today. Oh, God. So we should never make emotional decisions that could lead to a permanent decision in a temporary situation. Hannah gave up what she wanted most to keep her word. Oh, God. And, and, and she gave up. She gave it up just to keep her word. Don't act if you don't expect God to give it to you. I was sharing with someone as we was in the elevator and getting out, and I and someone was asking me, "What am I going to speak about today?" And the young lady and I and I said to her, "I said I'm, I'm going to deal with how we make these emotional decisions because we feel like we in a jam, mm -hmm. uh, and and then we make these emotional decisions, and then when God actually do it, mm -hmm. we regret mm -hmm. the fact that." I vowed, I, I made these promises to say I was going to do this. And so now I don't want to do the part that I committed to. Mm -hmm. Whether God did it based off of what I said or not, right. I said it. Yep. Oh, God. I, 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 I said it. So don't ask if you don't expect God to do it. Uh, you ask him to do under the, the conditions that you agree. Because the expectation is 
we have to follow through with all the decisions. Mm -hmm. First Samuel said this, this records what, what Hannah said in First Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. And she made this vow, O Lord of heaven's army, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime. Lord, help us today. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. This ain't Samuel's vow. All right. <laughs> yeah. So Samuel don't get a choice when he get of age yes. that I don't want to go to the temple. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. See, and, and, and I know we like to give our kids freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. But before we give them this freedom of choice, mm -hmm. we need to remember mm -hmm. what is the vow yes. that I made to God. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is it when I came up and I said, Pastor, I want our, our kids to be dedicated to the Lord. And, and, and we repeated all of this stuff in front of God and the church. And then because they become teenagers and because they become certain ages, we say, well, they need to make their own choices. What did you vow? Oh, God, what, what did you vow? Are you following through? See, I, I know she vowed that, that Samuel Howe would never be cut, but all she is saying is that I won't cut it. Mm -hmm. She can't control right. Samuel's actions. Uh -huh. She can't control his actions. She can't control his actions. But the deal is she has to understand that I got to do my part. I said his hair will never be cut. Mm -hmm. that, that's what the scripture said. Yes. His hair will never be cut. Mm -hmm. And since the Bible says his hair will never be cut, that means she can only account for her actions, mm -hmm. her vow. Mm -hmm. She did that. Lord, help me today. The Bible says that Hannah prayed unto the Lord alone. If you re keep reading over in chapter one, it will tell you about how they, how she got up from the table and she went to the temple and she began to pray over there. While she was praying, she wasn't praying out loud; she was praying in her heart. So Eli didn't, the, the priest didn't hear, her and he thought she was drunk. So she was praying, and she was praying, and so don't nobody know. I want us to get this. Don't nobody know what she have committed. All right. To the Lord, but her and God. I don't even know if her husband, Elkanah, I believe that's him, if he know at this particular point. I know in the scripture it reveals later that he know because it shows where he says, I hope you're able to keep your promise. Uh huh. But I don't know if he even knows at this point. And, and I say that to, to make this point is that whether I do it publicly mm -hmm. or privately, he can hear and see all things. Mm -hmm. So so there was nobody to keep mm -hmm. Hannah accountable mm -hmm. to do it. Oh God, Lord help us today. Nobody knew besides her and God. And at some point, as I said, her husband knew. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 21 through 23, it says this, the next year Elkanah, that's her husband, and, and his family went on their annual trip to offer a sacrifice to the Lord mm -hmm. and to keep his vow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so now this right here reveals to me that he has a vow that he is keeping. Mm -hmm. And I also believe this vow is, involves Samuel. Because of what he says here next. But Hannah, in verse 23, it says, But Hannah did not go. She told her husband, Wait until the boy is weaned. Mm -hmm. My God, today. They say that in, in these times, they weaned the child for two to three years. Lord, that's a lot of money. Oh, <laughs> uh, God, for mm -hmm. something that you've been waiting on yes. for years. Yes. That's a lot of bonding. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to have to... I, I'm, I'm going to have to... <laughs> 
give this up to a, a, a priest that got sons that got problems. In, in, in other words, it would appear that Eli don't know how to control his sons, and, and, and I'm going to give my boy uh, to Eli, but the truth is, I'm giving him to yeah. God, yes. and I'm trusting God to deal with Eli. I'm trusting God to deal with my to deal with my son. Lord, help us here. Oh, God. Verse 23. Oh, God. Verse 22 says, but Hannah did not go. She told her husband, wait until the boy is weaned. Then we, I will take him to the tabernacle and leave him there with the Lord permanently. Lord, help me today. Verse 23 in that first chapter, that it says, whatever you think is best, Elkanah agreed. Her husband agreed. Mm -hmm. He says, stay here for now. And listen to the next thing he said. And may the Lord help you Keep your promise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she stayed home and nursed the boy until he was weaned. You all listen. Elkanah understand something. He understand that Hannah, I know you've been taunted mm -hmm. by, by Penina. Penina, Penina. Mm -hmm. I know she has reduced you to tears at times. Mm -hmm. I know this is something that you always wanted. Matter of fact, I remember I even questioned you about uh, uh, why you're always crying. Aren't I more than 10 sons to you? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so I hope you are able mm -hmm. to keep your promise because I know how bad mm -hmm. you wanted this. I, I know how long you waited for this. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. See, because, y'all, the truth is the scripture only records that Hannah prayed. Mm -hmm. It never said that God agreed. That's it. Oh, God. That's it. it never said that God said, okay, I'm going to do this for you. So, in other words, Hannah has made these, this vow to the Lord. God has not responded to her. All Eli said was, may the Lord do this for you. That's his job. Mm -hmm. you, you know, he's the priest. And so, he, he ain't saying the Lord said he's going to do this for you. He just said, when she left the temple, may the Lord do this for you. After he done accused her of being drunk. So you know he ain't too spiritual. He just doing his thing. Mm. Mm. So Eli say, I, I mean, Elk and I say, I hope you're able mm. to keep your promise. Mm. My God. I hope you're able to do it. People of God, I don't know what y'all have promised and made to God. I know there's been things I have said that I was going to do for people. And I forgot. And, and, and the times that I did remember, I didn't do it. And so I was able to go back to God and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. God help me to do better. And if I dealt with the individual, I was able to go back to them and say, listen, I thought I was going to be able to do it. I, mm -hmm. and, and then if I just didn't do it because I just didn't do it, then I tell them, I just didn't do it. Mm -hmm. But the scriptures say, don't make a vow yes. to the Lord yes. if you ain't going to keep it. You, all, you don't have to try to manipulate God mm -hmm. to give you anything. Mm -hmm. What releases things from mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. is our faithfulness. Yes. <laughs> Without it. faith, it's impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. He said in Mark 11 and 24, when you pray, believe, yes. and you shall receive. Yes. So I don't have to manipulate no. God and, and tell God, well, God, if you do this, God, I'm going to do that. See, because sometimes he just might do it, mm -hmm. and now you obligate him to do yours. Mm -hmm. So, so don't, don't, don't make no vows that you're not willing to keep. All right. So keep your word and don't regret it. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. It didn't matter how much she wanted a son all of her life. It didn't matter how attached she and Samuel became doing this weaning process. Mm -hmm. She kept her word and showed no regret mm -hmm. for making a vow 
in keeping it. Regardless of being taunted by Panina and Hannah being emotionally distraught and reduced to tears. That's what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read it for you. First Samuel um, chapter 1 verse 5 through 8 and it says, and though he loved Hannah, talking about her husband Elkanah, he would give her only one choice portion because the Lord had given her no children. Look at her. She, she keep getting punished because or it appeared that she keep being punished or she keep being mistreated by people simply because she don't have no children. Verse 6 says, so Penina would taunt Hannah and make fun of her because the Lord had kept her from having children. Year after year, see this stuff went on for a long time. Yes. Year after year, it was the same. Peninnah would taunt Hannah as they went to the temple, to the tabernacle. Each time, Hannah would be reduced to tears and would not even eat. Why are you crying, Hannah? Elkanah would ask. Why aren't you eating? Why be downhearted just because you have no children? See, see, sometimes people just don't understand how bad you want something. All right. And they use terms like just because. Mm -hmm. Because they're, they're, see, because he said that, it, the scripture said earlier that Penina reduced Hannah, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And so now her husband as well is saying, what's the big deal? Right. I, I, the, the rest of the verse says, you have me. Mm -hmm. That's what, he's, that's what the scriptures say. It say, you have me. Isn't that better than having ten sons? Now, something should have told the fellow something. <laughs> that she didn't had him for years. Yes. But she's still longing mm -hmm. for a son. Right. Now, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, it, it's something to see other people receiving from what you know that comes from God. Yes. And and you know their lifestyle. Okay. Hannah know that Penina is taunting her and making fun of her and reducing her to tears. Her husband even know it. And he does nothing about it. Mm -hmm. And she have to deal with this year yeah. after year. Every time they go up to Jerusalem, to make the sacrifices and, and to offer the sacrifice, she make fun of. Mm -hmm. She have to walk back home or get back home and live in the same house with Penina. Mm -hmm. She got to hear Penina children running around the house. Mm -hmm. They can't call her auntie because that ain't her sister. She hear all of this as she desired until she got fed up. And she went to the temple and she prayed. She came through. But for many of us, we need to be very careful. Yes. Jesus said it. Don't do it. That's what Jesus said. I, I, I don't care what, I don't care how Hannah came out. Fine. Mm -hmm. Jesus came on the scene later and said, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Just simply say, this is what I do. This is what I want to do. If the Lord's will, I'm able to do it. Mm -hmm. Hannah didn't let none of this keep her from honoring her Bible. She didn't try, listen to this part. She didn't try to compromise with God to give her another child. Mm -hmm. She simply kept her vow. Because God answered her prayer. What am I saying right there? Is, is that just because she followed through and gave God, gave Samuel back to the Lord, regardless of how close they had got during that winning process, she, she wasn't like, well, God, you know, 
I didn't know it was going to be like this. I'd never been a mother before. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand how much I was going to love this boy. I, I didn't understand how much I, I, I didn't want to, want to let him go. Mm -hmm. Now, God, if I give him to you, now, will you promise me <laughs> that you would give me some more kids? Mm -hmm. That didn't happen, you all. She kept her word. Yes. And she didn't regret it. Mm -hmm. Nowhere in the scripture, it shows that she regretted it. Matter of fact, nowhere in the scripture it even says she asked for another child. But it do say, Lord, help me today. I'm going to read it right here. Because she kept her vow, she didn't have to pray for any more children. Mm -hmm. But Eli the priest asked this time for God to bless her mm -hmm. with children. And God did. Read right here in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 18 through 21. It said, But Samuel thought he was only a boy, served the Lord. He wore a linen garment like that of a priest. Oh God, God had his hands on him. Each year his mother made him a small coat for him and brought it to him when she came with her husband for the sacrifice. So every year she would see him mm -hmm. and she would bring him a coat. Mm -hmm. She loved this boy, mm -hmm. her only son. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Verse 20 says this in 1 Samuel chapter 2. Before they returned home, Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, may the Lord give you other children to take the place of this one she gave to the law. Ain't even talking about the, what the family gave, what the husband gave. So this, this thing was solely on Hannah. Mm -hmm. And listen to what verse 21 says. And the Lord blessed Hannah. Mm -hmm. Not this time because she prayed. Mm -hmm. Not this time because she had another request. Nowhere in the scripture say that she asked for more kids. She only wanted a son. Mm -hmm. But after she did her vow, the scripture says in verse 21, and the Lord blessed Hannah and she conceived and gave birth to three sons mm -hmm. and two daughters, mm -hmm. total of six kids. Mm -hmm. She get to manage five of them. Lord help us today. Meanwhile, Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. She got five. For being obedient and following through mm -hmm. one time. Mm -hmm. Man. Not because she asked anymore. Mm -hmm. She honored her vow with no regret. Mm -hmm. She did her part. She winged the child so that the child could go now and stay. Versus, okay, I'm going to go up and leave him for a month. No, no, no. Because she made the statement that he would be with you permanently. So when she was weaning him, doing her part, she left him at the temple. He grew up there. The scripture says he grew up in the presence of the Lord. Not in the presence of Eli's son. See, you can be in a bad place and still grow Come up on. in the presence of the Lord. That's it. Stop, stop worried about the physical place yes. because I can be in a physical place and not, the scripture says this, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. And, and, and so I can be in a, in a place and, and grow up spiritually. That's it. That's it. Then over in chapter two, this is where it gets so good. Hannah rejoiced in the Lord. Mm -hmm for granting her request mm -hmm. and helping her keep her vow. Thank you, Jesus. It said this, then Hannah prayed, my heart rejoices mm -hmm. in the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord made me strong. Mm -hmm. I, it took some strength from the Lord to, yes, to give up this boy. Mm -hmm. So she said, uh, 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 my heart rejoices in the law because I wasn't able to do this on my own. I know I made the vow, but I wasn't able to do this on my own. But I did play a part because I asked the Lord to help me. 
So she said, if my heart rejoices in the Lord, the Lord has made me strong. Now I have an answer mm -hmm. for my enemies. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I can tell them that when they try to pick at me now and, 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 and say, I'm barren. And, and, you know, because back then, if you was barren and couldn't have no kids, they, they really looked down on you real bad. So, so what Penina was doing when she was talking to Hannah was somewhat a part of the custom of that particular time. But now Hannah is praising God because she said, I got an answer. Yes. I don't have a son with me physically, mm -hmm. but I know I have a son. Mm -hmm. The Lord help me today. Oh, I, I can't be able to show him to everybody and say, this is my little man right here. Oh, this is what... See, this is who the Lord blessed me with. But no, every time they go to the temple, Lord Jesus, they're going to see what God has done for me. Mm -hmm. Because he's working in the temple. So when they get up there and they need a word from the Lord, although they taunted me, but when they get to the temple and they need to hear from the Lord, they can go in and see my son. Oh, God. So she's so excited now. She said, I have an answer for my enemies. I rejoice because... You rescued me. Thank you, God. My husband slept with me, but mm -hmm. you rescued me. Mm -hmm. Because the scripture, if you read over in the first, in, in first Samuel, it said, when they left there, Elkanah slept with his wife, and the Lord remembered yes, Hannah. what Hannah had prayed. Yes, God. Oh, God. He didn't answer her, but he remembered. Stop Jesus. always looking for the Come answer on. and Thank understand God. that if he remembered, you, oh, Jesus. God, he can move on behalf of his, of his memory. Yes, he don't have to tell you I'm going to do yes, something. Oh, oh, if it, see, sometimes he do that and sometimes he don't. But just if you know, oh my, I believe it's over in Hebrews, it says, no, it's in 1 John 5 and 14, I believe it is. Get that for me. 5 and 14 where it says that uh, when I know he hear me, I get my petition. Mm -hmm. Is it 5 and 14? 1 John 5 and 14? Mm -hmm. uh, God. Hey, hurry up up here. Uh, first John, I believe it is 5 and 14. I just want to read it so to make sure I get this thing right. Oh, God. Oh, God. And it's 15. You're 15 and 14? So, 5 and 15. Okay, First John 5 and 15. Listen to the word of God. And since we know he hears us uh -huh. when we make our requests, yes. we also know that he will give us what we ask. Uh -huh. So I don't need him to answer me all the time. But if I know, let's go to the verse right above that. Let's go to the verse right above that. And we are confident. Listen to this. We are confident. That he hears us. Uh-huh. That he hears us. Whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. Uh-huh. Now, when when we ask him for things that please him, see, now he already done set the rules <laughs> mm -hmm. and said, be fruitful and multiply. Oh, God, let your quibbles be full. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, so now I know this please him. Mm -hmm. The problem is, will he do it for me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Read the book. And since we know he hears us. Now, since I know mm -hmm. I'm living right. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Since I know he heard me. Mm -hmm. See, in, 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 in the Bible talk about when Hannah prayed, after she got finished praying, then the scriptures say she rejoiced as she went and ate. Remember, yes, she when did. she was being taunted, she didn't eat. But it, go back and read it. She, it said when she got finished praying, when she left there, she started rejoicing because she felt the presence of God and she started back eating. Why? Because she heard same way when God healed me of allergies. I knew that he heard me. Mm -hmm. Uh God, he didn't tell me I just healed you of allergies, son. No, I, I what I felt and what I and, and what I knew he heard is still lasting that they read the book. He hears us when we make our requests. Yes. We also know that he will give us what we ask for. Just because he heard me. Thank you. Now, I, 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 I must let you know now, to, to get God to hear you, you need to be in the right place. Yes. And it needs to be according to what his, what pleases him. Yes. So, all of this stuff, we're asking God for stuff to do wrong. <laughs> we're asking for a pass. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. But when I know he hear me, mm -hmm. the scriptures say, I receive it. That's 1 John 
5, 14, and 15. So Hannah received it. She said, now I have my answer. I rejoice because you rescued me. And then verse 2 in that chapter 2 says, no one is holy like the Lord. There's no one beside you. There's no rock like God. She, she knew how to respond. She was buttering God up. She, she knew how, she knew that man, I, 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 this requires some worship. With what you have done for me, I have an answer for my enemies. They can no longer taunt me. I will no longer be reduced in tears. Although I can't show you my son, I know that you gave me one God. So whenever anybody else asks me anything, I know I ain't got no reason to feel bad. I know what you've done for me. So I encourage you today, people of God, keep your word and be like Anna. Don't regret it. Because sometimes we keep our word, but we regret that, man, I wish I wouldn't have I wish I wouldn't have said that I was going to do this. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Hannah says she rejoiced in chapter 2. Mm -hmm. She rejoiced. It was a, it seemed like an easy thing from the scripture, although we know mm -hmm. that when you love and all of that, that it, it can be very challenging to give up something that you love. Each, I believe each and every one of us that have children, especially if we have a son, and, and that it would be hard for us to for God to tell us that he's going to, to ask us to do what he asked Abraham to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a son or a daughter, mm -hmm. I believe that that would just be too much for us. Yes. But the thing is, Hannah did. Mm -hmm. She knew what she was doing. She made a vow mm -hmm. and she kept it. And as a result, God bless her with five more kids. I don't know if that's how it's going to turn out for you with whatever your vow is. Whatever the vow that you have made. I, I don't know how God will multiply the blessing. But today I want to say, I want to speak into your life. Honor the vow. Ecclesiastics say we can't go back and say I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Just honor it. I believe when they when one I can't remember what the guy name was in the scripture, but when he had came home, something had happened, and he had said that the first person that walked through this door or something, um, they 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 going to die, mm -hmm. or, or or they going to die, and, and it happened to be his daughter. Mm -hmm. And I, I forget the passage of scripture. Uh, maybe one of the preachers can put it in the chat. But, but when, when the child came home, she could see on the dad's face that he had made God a vow. And he was struggling, but the child said, Dad, honor your vow. Do what you said. It's going to be all right. Do what you said. And so I know sometimes it can be challenging. But that's why he warned us not to do it. Yes. And I know you may have done it prior to the blood. I believe he'll forgive us for that. Because we did that not knowingly on the other side of the blood. We was liars on the other side of the blood. So so to 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 make a vow. And, and not do it is, is to tell a lie as well. I am not trying to give you a way out. I am saying you need to pray about that if it was prior to the blood. But I know these some of this stuff that we done said since we've been saved and we belong to him. He said, honor. So today I, tell, I say to you, keep your word and don't regret it. Scripture open Isaiah say, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. If you really want the blessings of God to materialize for you keeping your vow, you must also don't don't do this regretfully. 
do it the right way. All right, God bless you. We love you, Father, in the name.